Hi, everybody. I'm here with Glenn Southam and we're talking recruiter enablement. So, Glenn, thanks for joining me today. Good to see you. Uh, give us a quick introduction. Uh, hi, Adam. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm, I don't know. It feels weird saying a veteran of the recruitment industry now, but I'm entering my 20th year in recruitment. Um, pretty much all of that has been spent in a, in a marketing uh, position. Um, four years as a consultant advisor in um, both uh, tech companies who supply to the recruitment world and recruitment agencies themselves. Um, after four years of that, I, I actually moved back in house to uh, meet where I am now. They're a life science recruitment company, and I've gone in there, hence why we're speaking now, to try and do things a little bit differently. Like my team is set up from a sales enablement, recruiter enablement point of view, where it includes marketing, it includes data analysis, it includes customer success and automation. Um, so I've got all of those skills within my team, which is quite unique, especially on the agency side in recruitment. Um, so that's kind of where we are now. And we've been building that team for about a year, starting to see the results. It was a, it's certainly not a quick win, but um, we're very much talking in the language, like you said, sales enablement, um, recruiter enablement in everything that we do. Yes. OK, so you've talked about sales enablement and recruiter enablement like <clears throat> I've taken a lot of my inspiration for recruiter enablement as I see it from sales enablement. Mm -hmm. um, it, are, are there any big differences in, in how you enable a recruiter to do in an agency environment to do the two different things? I don't think so. Is it, you know, there's been an age old argument of <laughs> Marketing is sales, sales is marketing, sales is recruitment, recruitment is sales, and, and whatever combination of those those you want. And I think that, that there isn't a difference. And I think being able to put something under an umbrella of recruiter enablement is it actually gives focus to a whole business when you're talking that and individuals' roles and departments. Um, it's certainly something that that I'm trying to achieve. Um, and the key to doing that, for, from my perspective, is you know understanding the process inside and out from from a recruiter point of view, from a candidate point of view, from a hiring manager point of view, from a talent point of view, and understanding all those points and then how you can you know fit into that with whatever activity um, you're doing. So when you say that, you mean um, like literally understanding what are all the different steps in the process from for everybody as they come together to make this recruitment happen and analyzing how can you facilitate that better or give people things that they need is that is that what you mean 100 percent. i've got a really rough and ready uh spreadsheet sitting, <laughs> sitting on my desktop that um that i think it's there's kind of 18 stages that I've gone through in terms of a, a recruitment process. Um, and that's all the way through from attraction to onboarding and retention and the various stages that happen in there, whether it's shortlisting, interviewing, offer negotiation, ev everything, anything and everything. That goes down one side, then across the top, it's literally what the activities can and should happen. So whether that's uh, marketing activities and that can be split down into content, whether it's uh, feedback loops at different stages, what can be automated, what can't be, as well as what the salespeople have to do. You know, pick up pick up the phone or send an email, you know, what gets tracked on a CRM. So yeah, it's quite it's quite comprehensive and it's forever changing, as we know, and it's very different compared to, you know, if you're hiring for a, a, a permanent position to a contract position. Um, but having that, I think not only helps for you to, you know, sell what you're doing and sell your impact within the, the business, but it just kind of creates real clarity that everyone's working to to kind of the, the same goal, which I think um, when I put my marketing hat on, one of the biggest challenges uh, I think marketers have or have had is the is the disconnect with sales a, a lot of the time. Um, and I always, I've always, even today, where there's so much technology and we can track everything, I've always found it baffling that marketers can't communicate the impact that they're having because I, I just think it's always probably been done the the wrong way round and not appreciated that 
in reality you are there to enable um, sales or enable a recruitment process to move forward effectively. Mm. What do you, I agree with all of that, um, and the irony of recruit of marketers not being great at communicating the value of what they're doing. I mean, you know, we, I, I say we loosely as marketers should be um, should 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 be the best the best of everybody at being able to do that. What's the balance between providing playbooks and scripts and paint by numbers mm. versus um, recruiters doing like the other end of the spectrum is recruiters just do everything using their own individual flair. What's the bal what's the balance? I mean, there's pros and cons of everything on this spectrum, but what's your view? Yeah, I, it's it's easy to say it should just be a, a collaborative effort, but you know, from a selfish point of view, and when I look at look at what what I'm trying to achieve with with my team is that I want to take everything away from the recruiters other than them having really powerful closing conversations if, if I'm being honest is like yeah. how far down to that process um yeah. can can we get um whether that is scripts whether that is um you know utilize utilization of things like chat gpt and job descriptions and everything like that and embedding it in in technology doing the feedback loops getting interview feedback you know a lot of the time recruiters don't want to do this stuff so if we can get that don't want and, it, and when someone doesn't want to do it even when they do do it they don't do it very well so if if you know you can enable that and take that pain away from a recruiter but also at the same time because you likely to have the consistency and the time to do it create a better experience for the for the on the candidate side Surely it's um it's a win win situation. I, I I genuinely believe that um you know there, there's no reason whether it's marketing wh whatever function you want to call it is that it should be close to maybe eighty percent controlled by you know a non recruiter um kind of having a conversation even to the point now you know you look at even sourcing techniques kind of can be uh, can be taken up and I'm, I'm sure any sources who are watching will probably really disagree but there there is a yeah. gap there so, certainly in certain positions and certain uh, types of roles depending on what there, there's always caveats isn't there in terms of the roles and the markets and the locations but yeah I, I genuinely believe that I think the where the struggle has been in the past there's been a real obsession I think from a from a marketing perspective to measure absolutely everything and maybe marketers are being demanded to show uh, ROI on on everything um you know even brand led initiatives um it's very hard to get ROI on um on a blog post talking about industry stuff but you can get a sense of engagement now you you uh, you know this better than most you can see if people click once, click twice, go to other pages. These are the things that you don't need to necessarily report on because people don't care, but you need to understand that it's part of the journey to the point when you can say the reason why this person clicked on my Calendly link to book in half an hour's time to chat with me about this role is because they've been on this journey. That, that's kind of what you need to know, not yeah. saying, I wrote, I wrote a blog about five life sciences trends. It has generated us fifty thousand pounds in revenue. You're never going. You're never going to do that. <laughs> mm, yeah. No, absolutely. You're getting into the area of like multi-touch attribution, and mm. some of that's very complicated, and most yeah. people have never cracked it yet. Um, but I agree but with it. But on that, people let people let perfection get in the way of progression. On that, I, I, my it's like totally. Yeah, people say, oh, if I can't do it all the way through to 100 percent. i'm not going to do it at all but doing something's better than nothing 100 percent. i couldn't agree more the amount of people i've met who are like well if it can't do exactly what i need i'm not going to do it and i, I, I a year later asked them what progress they'd made with it and it was still nothing I'm thinking, you should have mm -hmm. jfdi my friend um <laughs> the the so what you're talking about is kind of I guess the last mile analogy is mm. one that's quite good. That's what we want recruiters doing. It's using their influencing skills and their emotional intelligence and ability to handle the tricky sort of um, or delicate 
um, situations around things like negotiating the salary and the start date and uh, yeah. convincing the hiring manager or the HR team or whatever that that is the person that they need because they can do X and Y that hasn't been asked for or the skills are absolutely, you know, comparable with what they're looking for and that type of thing. So, yeah, but even um, even at, even at that stage, you know, when you come to recruiter enablement, it, you know, it's not it's not completely on the recruiter then some of those examples you were talking about around true. you know fear of loss convincing that that, that that that's when you need to be having kind of the case studies or the data that backs up similar scenarios and things just to give them a little bit more ammo than their you know their good um, sales speak that's right objection handling scripts and that type of thing absolutely yeah, yeah. okay Glenn, it's been really great to talk to you today. Um, thanks very much for your time and uh, I look forward to catching up again soon. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it.